In this video, we solve problem number two from the spring 2021 quiz number two for differential equations. This is a Bernoulli differential equation. Now there were multiple forms to this quiz, so this may not be your problem number two. This is problem number two on uh, one of the forms of the quiz. So let's um, start by writing the Bernoulli equation in the right form. Um, remember that if you have a Bernoulli DE, it can be written in this form. Um, the derivative of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable, in this case, the dependent variable is y and the independent variable is t, plus a function of the independent variable times the dependent variable equals a function of the independent variable times the dependent variable to some power. Notice that this looks very similar to the form of first order linear differential equation. Um, if n was equal to zero, it would be first order linear. That's just the form of that. We solve that with an integrating factor. If n were equal to one, we'd have a function of t times y, and we could subtract that from both sides and simplify that even further. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it would be first order linear and also happen to be separable. But if that power of y is anything other than zero or one, and the differential equation can be written in this form, the DE is uh, Bernoulli. Um, so what we want is to write this differential equation in this form, and it's almost there. We just need a coefficient of one in front of the dy dt. So we will divide every term by 2t, <coughs> excuse me, and I think I want to write that cube root of y as y to the one third power. But if we bring that up to the numerator, it'll be y to the negative one third power. Just as a reminder, the nth root of x to the m is x to the m over n. The index of the radical goes in the denominator there. And if you have a const or a one over you know, y to some power, that's y to the same power but negative. And of course, if you have a constant over y to some power, we can write that as a constant times one over y to that power, which gives us the constant times y to the negative n. So I'm using this here, um, um, this identity here to get from here to here, um, but I'm also using this one and this one. Um, so uh, I have this differential equation, I need to get rid of the two t I need a one in front of my dy dt, so I will divide all of the terms <coughs> by that 2t. And if we simplify a bit, we have dy dt plus 3 over 2t times y equals nine over two t times y to the negative one third. So that is our p of t, that's our f of t, and our n is negative one third. So our differential equation is written in that form, the appropriate form for a Bernoulli differential equation. Well, it turns out that with Bernoulli differential equations, they can be solved by a substitution, and that substitution is always this. We're going to let u equal y to the one minus n power when we do that, we can multiply by an appropriate factor and that will allow us to write the, the resulting equation as a first order linear differential equation in the variable u. Um, so that's the plan. We're going to do that for our specific value of n. One minus a negative one third is one plus one third or four thirds. Then we'll compute the derivative of u with respect to the independent variable t, remembering that y is a function of t. So you can think of this as the chain rule, or you can think of it as implicit differentiation from calculus one. The derivative of y to some power is that power times y to the one less power, four thirds minus one is gonna be a positive one third. 
excuse me, but y is a function of t. So we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is dy dt in this case. So we let u equal that and we compute a du dt. And then I'll say using the chain rule. Or you can think of it as implicit differentiation. Either way is fine. Now, in order to write this differential equation or to transform this differential equation into a first order linear differential equation in U, we're going to take the equation that we have there and multiply it by this coefficient of dy dt. Because the idea is that when we take this and multiply the entire equation by it, that first term is going to be the derivative of u with respect to t. So this is my original de. I'll call this one de star just so that we have a label for it. Now we're going to take de star and multiply it by this factor of 4 thirds y to the positive 1 third. And remember, you want to multiply every term by that. OK. And then by design, this is du dt. And we can simplify a little bit. The 3 is reduced. 2 goes into 4 twice. And so we end up with 2 divided by t. And then y to the 1 third times y to the first, you add the exponents. That's going to be y to the 4 thirds, and that's what u is. So these two pieces together give us our u right there. And then over here, we want to simplify as well. Then 3 goes into 9 three times. 2 goes into 4 twice. So we end up with a 6 in the numerator. We're dividing by t. And the y to the negative 1 third and the y to the 1 third when you add the exponents, you get y to the 0, and so you get 1. And that will always happen. If this is y, to, if u is y to the 1 minus n, the derivative of y with respect, or of u with respect to y, the derivative of this piece, is always going to have a 1 minus n times y to the 1 minus n minus 1. So the 1s will cancel, and you'll always have y to the negative n here. That's why we write the, or that's why we use this substitution because the derivative of this will always have a y to the negative n, and the y to the negative n times that y to the positive n at the end will cancel, and that'll give us that first order linear equation in u that we were looking for. So we, what did we do? We computed du dt, then we multiplied the differential equation by 4 thirds y to the 1 third. <coughs> and then once we've done that, we um, write the differential equation in terms of the new variable u. And it's always a first order linear differential equation in u, and we can see that it has the right form. We've got the derivative plus a function of t times the dependent variable equals a function of t. And I'm going to call that DE double star. Now that's the whole point of the Bernoulli method. Um, it's we're taking this equation that we can't solve. We use the substitution to write it as an equation that we can solve. Then we solve this equation and we back substitute. So um, from here, let's solve the first order linear differential equation. I'll use a different color for the steps of this method. And the method is the integrating factor method. So we're going to use an integrating factor. The first thing that we do with that method is we identify p of t and compute its antiderivative. Let's say compute. OK. So p of t in this case is just 2 over t. That's nice, nice and easy. So the integral of p of t 
is the integral of two over t. So you have two natural log of the absolute value of t plus c. We don't need infinitely many um, integrating factors. We just need the one. So we can choose a particular value of c. We'll choose c equals zero. And then this can be simplified in that case. We can bring that two inside the logarithmic function. So we have natural log of the absolute value of t squared. And that's just using this property. If you have a constant times natural log of a, you can bring that constant inside. Okay, so we've got the integral of p of t right there. E to that power is our integrating factor. So we use mu of t to be the integrating factor. Or you can just say if if you want. So let's define that to be that. And those reduce. And we have the absolute value of t squared. <coughs> and um, that's always going to be positive, except for when t is 0. When t is 0, the natural log of 0, um, that, that won't work. It's undefined. The rest of the time, this would have been fine. Um, so t equals 0 is the only um, value of t that is disallowed by this function here. Um, but this absolute value of t has different values um, on different intervals. So we really need to think about whether this is going to be, well, actually, um, whether t is positive or negative, the absolute value of t squared is going to be uh, just t squared. So never mind. I was going to say, if that was an absolute value of t cubed, we would have to worry about domain issues. But um, this time, we don't have to. Because if you take negative t and you square it, you get t squared. You get positive, take positive t and you square it, and you get t squared. So either way, our integrating factor is t squared. OK, sorry about that. Aside, I almost went down, um, but we know for now that t is not allowed to be zero. This is our integrating factor. Now we're going to take de double star. And we're going to multiply it by the integrating factor. That was Bernoulli's brilliant idea. He said, if you take this differential equation and you multiply it by the integrating factor, then guess what? The left-hand side is going to be the derivative of your dependent variable times your integrating factor. Our integrating factor is t squared this time. Uh, one of those t's will reduce. One of these t's will reduce. So this simplifies to t squared times du dt plus 2t times u equals 6t. And if we've done everything correctly, this should be the derivative with respect to t of u times t squared. Now remember, this is not multiplication. This is the derivative of what's inside the brackets. Um, I don't want you to think of this as dy dt times this. It's the derivative with respect to t of this. And so it's a derivative of a product. And if we want to check our work, we can use the product rule. u is a function of t, and t squared is a function of t. So if I were to use the product rule, product rule says that the derivative of this product is the derivative of the first times the second. So that's du dt times t squared, good, plus derivative of the second, that would be 2t times the first, u. So that actually checks out. It's always a good opportunity or a good idea to check your work at this step, just to make sure you didn't make any algebra errors or anti-differentiation errors earlier. Sometimes people will forget to pick up the sign if that's negative, they'll forget to put that on their p of t. Um, but this checking step will always let you know if all of the steps that were um, earlier in the method whether identifying p or the anti-differentiation or the algebra involving the integrating factor um, were possibly incorrect. <coughs> but this time it checks out. So we say we multiplied the differential equation by the integrating factor. Then we recognize that the left-hand side 
And then we also checked that the left-hand side was equal to the derivative with respect to t of u times the integrating factor. And it was, and that's great because here it was, it looked impossible to find u. Um, we couldn't separate the variables. There was nothing else that we could do. But now that we're here, we're actually only two operations away from getting u by itself. This says, take u, multiply it by t squared, take the derivative of that result with respect to t and you're gonna get six t. In order to undo all of those operations, we start on the outside and we undo that. And then we sort of work our way inside until we get u of t by itself. So we are getting rid of this derivative with anti-differentiation on both sides with respect to t. The antiderivative of the derivative is the original function u times t squared. <coughs> and on the right-hand side, we had the antiderivative of 6t. So bring the 6 down, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, add a constant of integration. And of course, that 6 over 2 simplifies to a 3. And after we have anti-differentiated both sides to get rid of that derivative, Now we almost have u by itself, it's multiplied by t squared. So we will um, divide by t squared to get u by itself. Now a lot of people forget that this entire right-hand side has to be divided by t squared, not just this guy. A lot of people just say one plus c, it's not one plus c, or three plus c, I guess. Um, that's not quite it. Uh, this c has to be divided by the t squared as well. So we reduce the t squareds. Now we've got a u here. And then we have 3t squared over t squared. If you want, you could divide each term by t squared. And then we have that there. Um, so that's a possibility. You could simplify it like that if you want. Um, you call it 3 uh, plus c over t squared. Or you could do it this way. You could just leave it as is, as 3t squared plus c divided by t squared. Either one of those is fine. <coughs> if I were solving a first order linear differential equation, I would probably simplify it this way. But if I'm solving a Bernoulli equation, I often like to have my u in the form of a fraction like this, just in case u involves a negative power of y. If u involves a negative power of y, um, then I can flip both sides and that's going to make it a little bit easier um, or all the algebra will be easier if this is a fraction like this. If it's not written as a single fraction, you can't just take the reciprocal of each of those pieces. So we, we have to be careful. Um, but Okay, so that's an aside. That's for a different problem, I guess. Um, we're anti-differentiating. Then we divided by the integrating factor. to isolate u, and then we figured out what u was, which is great. Um, but now we have to back substitute. u was just something we made up so that we could solve the Bernoulli differential equation. So we have to remember that u was some function of y. So we're going to replace u with whatever it was in terms of y, and let's see u was y to the four thirds power. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna use the second one this time. And it's just, it's just an aesthetic choice. I actually just like the way this is going to look when it's raised to a power rather than this raised to a power, but either way is fine. Um, and I want to get y by itself here. Oops, I forgot to write this. In order to isolate y from here, you want to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. If there's a 4 thirds here, you want to raise both sides to the 3 fourths. And the reason that we do that 
is because of this property from algebra, if you have a something raised to a power raised to a power, you would multiply those exponents together. We want that power to be one. In order for that power to be one, we need reciprocal powers here so that when we multiply them, we just get a one. So this is y of t equals 3t squared plus c over t squared raised to the 3 fourths power. And we know that um, from earlier that t had to be um, non-zero. That makes sense because you can't divide by zero. But um, solutions of differential equations are always defined on single intervals, not unions of intervals. Um, so we need to decide, do we want zero to infinity or do we want negative infinity to zero? And sometimes it's arbitrary. Sometimes we just pick whichever one of those we want. But this time um, we have an initial condition. So the initial condition is going to tell us which of the intervals to choose. If we're on the real line, we can't choose zero. Um, T equals one has to be in our interval of existence. Since we're looking for the interval of existence containing t equals one, we must be on that side. So our interval is going to be zero to infinity. Okay. So we've got our general solution on the maximal interval of existence. Now, this is not a particular solution yet. A particular solution doesn't have an arbitrary constant in it. This is just a solution to the differential equation, not the initial value problem. But we were given an initial value problem this time. We we're told that when t equals 1, y is equal to 1. So we need to use that here. Um, to solve for c. So we have y of 1 equals 1, which um, is equivalent to saying that when t equals 1, y equals 1. So we're going to use the ic to find c. ic being initial condition to find c, the arbitrary constant in our family of solutions. And it was a nonlinear differential equation, so I guess I shouldn't call this a gs. It's just a family of solutions. There might be some singular solutions out there and I'm not sure where they are or what they are, but this is a family. Hopefully it contains most of them, but there might be a solution out there that's not in the family because it's nonlinear. Okay, so now we're gonna use um, uh, the fact that t, when t equals one, y equals one to find the value of c. So you substitute in t equals one here. And that's going to give us a 3 plus c raised to the 3 fourths power. And that's what y of 1 would be no matter what um, c is. But we're told that when t is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So we want to set this result equal to 1 and then solve for c. OK, so now we have this pretty simple equation involving c. Now this might seem like overkill because you probably already know that three plus C equals one. Um, but let's just practice our algebra. If we wanna get rid of the three fourths power, we need to raise both sides to the four thirds power. And that will undo those operations and we'll have a three plus C on the left. One to any power is just one. So if we subtract C from, or subtract uh, three from both sides, we have uh, c equals negative 2. So y of t is equal to 3t squared plus c, which is negative 2, divided by t squared, all raised to the 3 fourths power on the interval from 0 to infinity. So that's our particular solution on our interval of existence. So we substitute t equals 1 into the formula for y of t, set the result equal to 
the y value that was given in our initial condition, which was one. You wanna solve for c. And then once you have solved for C, you substitute that into the family of solutions to find the particular solution. <coughs> All right. So that is how we solve a Bernoulli equation. I know that this can be overwhelming. There are a lot of steps here, a lot of places where you can get lost. Um, but I want you to think about the big picture. The big picture is if you have a Bernoulli equation, we can make a substitution. And through that substitution, we can make it first order linear. And when it's, when it's first order linear, we can solve that with an integrating factor and then just back substitute to get y by itself. Um, so that's the big picture. In order to do that, we need to write the differential equation in the standard form for Bernoulli, let u equal y to the one minus n, compute du dt, you're gonna have this extra factor. You wanna take your differential equation and multiply by that extra factor. When you do, that differential equation will be something that you can rewrite in terms of u just through substitution. You say this piece is du dt, this piece is a function of t times u, this piece is just a function of t. It will always work out that way. If it doesn't work out that way, you may have used the wrong formula here, or maybe done, made an arithmetic mistake up there. Okay, so then you have this first order linear equation that you need to solve. So you solve it. You identify p, you anti-differentiate, e to that power is your integrating factor. Multiply by the integrating factor, that will cause the left-hand side to be the derivative of your dependent variable u times the integrating factor. To get rid of the derivative, you take the antiderivative. To get rid of this multiplication, you do the division. And then you're here. And then you back substitute. You say, okay, well, u is this, but I was looking for y, so what is y? In order to find out y, we replace u with y to the 4 thirds. To get rid of the 4 thirds, you raise both sides to the reciprocal power. That's gonna give you y by itself. If we um, are looking just for a general solution or a particular for a family of solutions, and I'm, I'm just gonna say family of solutions because it's a nonlinear differential equation. Sometimes they have um, singular solutions. So we've got a family of solutions here. Most of the time we would be done. If we have an initial condition though, we use the initial condition to tell us the relationship between that T value or the y value or the x value or whatever the um, independent variable value is um, and the y value. So you plug in the independent variable, the value of the independent variable that they gave you. You set the result equal to the y value and then you solve that equation for c in whatever way is appropriate using some kind of algebra methods from before. Once you find the c, you're not done. You have to plug that c back in here in order to find a particular solution. Your goal is to find a single function that satisfies the differential equation and the initial condition at the same time. And you wanna know what interval it's defined on, the largest single interval possible, and it's never a union of intervals. Um, the largest interval that does not contain t equals zero that does contain t equals one is the interval from zero to infinity. So that's our interval of existence. <clears throat> 